Hi, I'm Tomek from StorageFreak.net. In today's video I would like to continue with the basic administration task for NetApp, this time from the sound perspective, or in the other words from the block perspective where we work with the loons more than with the TIFFs or NFS shares. The basic plan for today's uh, screencast is to create an aggregate um, volume, put a loon on it, create an iGroup, configure it, add a loon to an iGroup, then um, configure the iSCSI connection between the Windows host and the storage array, and try to map the loon and format it as a normal drive from the Windows host. Ok, so let's get started. I will try to do the exercise with the graphic interface using on command system manager so it will be easier for you to understand if you are completely new to NetApp um, but I encourage you to try command line as well because it's just much more powerful and if you know what you are doing it's actually faster to do things in the command line anyway uh, I've got here NetApp 823 which is actually data on tap working in 7 mode with the version 8.2.3 and that's the one we are going to use today With the on command system manager um, welcome window, you have to put the username and password. And there is our dashboard after we log in. I have some issues with the uh, Adobe Flash uh, plugin, so you cannot see the nice pictures, but actually it doesn't matter right now. Let me just go to disks. And as you can see there are many spare disks. Let's go to the aggregate. There's only one which is heavily utilized. So let's create a new aggregate for our task. There's a wizard. Just go next. Uh, choose the RAID type, either RAID DP or RAID 4. Let's choose RAID DP for the better security. Let's call it aggregate sun, so it's for sun data and let's choose from uh, those disks, let's choose 16 of them that's just an example mm, the weight group size is 16 as well uh, so to create uh, 16 disks in the weight group size, 16 means that there will be only one RAID group created but it will be full, so that's good so in the future if you wish to expand this aggregate for the performance uh, point of view it will be better to add 16 or the multiplier of 16 this to this one let's hit the create button to just continue Alright, the aggregate is created. As you probably, hopefully, remember from my last video, aggregate is just a bunch of disks connected in one or more RAID groups on which you can build additional, um, how to say it, additional level of storage. In our case, those gonna be volumes. So let's go ahead and create a volume. Let's call it all sun as well. Build upon aggregate sun, that's good. And let's make it 10 gigabyte in size. With snapshot reserve might be 5%, doesn't matter for us right now. Okay, this one is created. So now we've got our volume for sun, which is 10 gigabyte in size total remember about the 5% that's used for the snapshots so the available space is 9.5 gigabyte in this case now I've got a choice we can either create a Q tree and and later on put loon straight on the Q tree or just put it on the volume in our case let's just go ahead and just put it on the volume to do so you have to navigate for the loon section if the, if the loons choice is not available for you it probably means you don't have 
any protocol license that can be used for loons. Those are either iSCSI or Fiber Channel Protocol. In my case, I'm going to use iSCSI since this is just the lab environment, and unfortunately, I don't have any uh, Fiber Channel environment. Anyway, we are in the loon section, and let's go ahead and create a loon. Here's the wizard again. Let's call it Windows Loon 1, which will be. Yeah, let's just leave it Windows 2008 or later. And let's make it 5 GB in size. Next. Yes, we want to use our aggregate name Aggregate Sun and the volume name. No, actually, we don't want to create a new volume because we have a volume already created. So let's choose select an existing volume option. And in our aggregate sum, we've got our volume sum. Next. And now we can add the initiator group or the I group. But let's just skip this step right now. Uh, here's the summary. And the loon is created, which is already online, but obviously still not accessible for any host. Now, the next step will be to configure the iGroup or the initiator group, but for that, we we'll first have to pre configure our Windows host. Unfortunately, again, Windows with the Polish language, sorry for that. Let's navigate to the Windows option initiator size CASI. And in the section configuration, you've got the initiator name of your Windows host. That's what you want to copy. Let me just copy that. Now navigate back to our NetApp. We've got all what we need to create an initiator group. Let's go to, again, Loons section, initiator groups, create. Now we have to give it a name. Let's call it iGroup. So iGroup one you have to choose which operating system is going to use this i group in our case that will be windows it's going to be iSCSI because we don't have either fiber channel or fiber channel over ethernet and let's go for the initiators and add our windows initiator and create now we have created our i group um, the next step will be to actually create a session between Nether Filer and our Windows host. Let me just navigate quickly to the command line so we can actually see how it looks like from the command line. As you can see we've got our iGroup1 with this initiator which is not logged in, right? Now, to create a session, uh, you have to navigate back to the Windows screen iSCSI initiators, go for the discovery and the discovery portal, uh, type the IP address of your NetApp file, at least one of the interfaces, in my case let's just use this one, and click OK. Now, you can actually see in the background uh, there is a notification that the iSCSI new session from initiator and our Windows initiator uh, is well established, right? Now let's go back to the iSCSI initiators, that's our Windows screen, and let's go for the um, target. As you can see, here is our IQM from NetApp with this IQM address, which is not active. Now all we have to do is just go and click connect. Just go OK. And the status is connected. Let's just double check that with uh, with NetApp. Again, iGroup show. And now you can see that iGroup1 with this IQN is actually logged in on E0A. Why E0A? because we have chosen, let me just go back here, we have chosen this IP address, dot .51 at the end, and let's go for the ifconfig is your A. 
oh sorry typo I I have config e0a that's the IP address we have used that's why we see this interface over here okay now let me just go back to the iSCSI initiators from our Windows machine again if this mm, discovery portal failed go to your NetApp and just make sure that the in in configuration and in iSCSI you've got iSCSI service running and if it's available for the interface you have chosen uh, in your discovery portal right as you can see we have or I have chosen E0A which is enabled for iSCSI and the iSCSI service is running and there's more or less final step from the NetApp host or the NetApp filer you have to actually map the loon we have created to the iGroup we have created to do so let's navigate to the loons section again within the loon management find our loon go with edit initiator groups and map it to iGroup1 and optional put the loon id the loon id has to be unique and for it can start with zero although zero is kind of special number and with some types of operating systems it means special things so if you are not sure what to do just start with one let's just go safe and close and we can actually navigate back to to the command line from the NetApp and you can see even the information that this loon was mapped to the initiator group I group 1 you can even, even go with the command loon show minus m to see that this loon path is mapped to I group 1 with the loon id 1 on the protocol iSCSI and pretty much with this one and with the I group show uh, I group one uh, information that the uh, initiator is logged in, it means that everything is ready from the NEDA point of view. Now all you have to do is just do the magic on the Windows host to actually attach the LAN to your Windows. To do so, you can navigate to the system management with your Windows host and go for the disk management okay as you can see we've got only one disk which is the zero plus the um, CD and DVD drives now we can actually go right click on the disk management and go with the rescan and we can see our disk 1 which is 5 gigabyte uh, in size that's actually our loan from NetApp now we can go right click on it initiate disk when it's online we can go again right click Oh, actually go here right click and create a new volume the simple volume um, that's the Windows um, screens to do now we have to choose the letter which one you want to use G is fine with me and the uh, file system let it be NTFS which is kind of standard right now for the Windows environment and the uh, label let's call it laptop this and let's make it a f uh, fast formatting so it will not take too much time okay that's the summary everything's okay so let's go with uh, finish now the formatic, uh, formatting is in background and it's done
now we can actually go to the computer let me just quickly do that and you can actually see it over here NetApp disk which is more or less 5 gigabyte in size you can actually go here create a file Just a second, it open on the second screen. This is a test file. Go with save. File is created, everything is working fine. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you today. Just the brief introduction with the basic steps to create a volume. Um, or the first aggregate volume, put an loon on it, create an I group. Uh, configure it from the Windows host, uh, map it, actually map the loon to your iGroup and then mount it on your Windows host, uh, format it, create a partition, create a file system and just try to put some data on it just to make sure it's working. Um, thank you for watching and as always uh, please subscribe to my channel, all comments and suggestions are most welcome and if you want to learn more about storage in general just navigate to my blog on storagefreak.net thanks again bye